Hello, I'm Dr. Roberta Dwyer. I'm a veterinarian at the Gluck Equine Research Center at the University of Kentucky. And what we're going to cover today is the general overall anatomy of the horse. Behind me is a horse skeleton that is almost totally complete. I will show you which bone is missing from this skeleton, but we're very lucky to have an entire skeleton of the horse so we can teach anatomy and physiology to our students and to all of you. The average horse size is anywhere from 14.3 to 16, 17, or even 18 hands tall. Uh, the average light horse that most people will ride, including quarter horses, Morgans, Appaloosas, is anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, depending, again, on their height and their overall size. The actual horse skeleton has a little over 200 bones. We're not going to go over all 200 bones today, however. We're going to go through two distinct general divisions of the horse skeleton. One is called the axial skeleton. I like to break down big things like 200 some odd bones of horses into smaller pieces. So we're going to break it down to two pieces. The axial skeleton starts at the head and includes all of the vertebrae, the cervical vertebrae of the neck, the thoracic vertebrae of the main part of the back, the ribs, and the ribs will connect through some cartilage to a breastbone or a sternum. That's the one bone that's missing from this body because the cartilage disintegrates when these bones were processed to actually construct the skeleton. So there is a breastbone just like we have, but it's not on the skeleton. So continuing with the axial skeleton, here's the thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae. There's a fused set of five bones back here called the sacrum. These are fused together. And then obviously in horses, you've got the tail vertebrae. Those are called coccygeal or caudal vertebrae. And those vary in number depending on the breed and type of horse. So that is the axial skeleton. The second division of the skeleton of a horse is the appendicular skeleton or the appendages, the front legs and the back legs. So we'll start with the front legs. And it's just like people. You know, we're very comparison, comparable. We have a shoulder blade or a scapula. The horse has a scapula down to the humerus, which is the same as ours. They have an elbow, which is part of the ulna, but the ulna in horses is fused to the larger bone or the radius, which is our forearm bones. The carpal bones down here, which there are several of, equate to our wrist bones. Most people call this the knee, and that's lay terminology, which is fine as long as everybody understands what that is. But this is actually the equivalent of the wrist in the person. Then there's three bones down here that we'll go into more detail in another segment. Um, these are the metacarpal bones, the sesamoid bones, and then the phalanges, the uh, long pastern bone, the short pastern bone, and the coffin bone. So this is the front limb of the animal. The hind limb comes, starts back here with the pelvic girdle. And if you've ever been riding, and it's been a long time since you've been riding, and your seat bones are sore, that's the equivalent to this part of the skeleton on the horse. This is their seat bone, but they're a vertical, they're a horizontal animal and we're a vertical animal. Then the thigh bone, or the femur, which is the same as our thigh bone. This bone right here is the patella. And this, anatomically, is the knee, as it, equal, as it uh, equals the, the knee in a person. This large bone here is the tibia. And in people, we have a tibia, but we also have a fibula, which is on the outside or the lateral side of our leg. Those bones are fused in the horse, so they don't have two bones here, they just have one. And then you have the equivalent of our ankle with the hock, hock bones here. And then again, we'll go into more detail later on with the cannon bone or the third metatarsal bone, and then the long pastern bone, the short pastern bone, and the coffin bone. So that's just a general overview of the skeleton of the horse and we will get into more distinct pieces of the anatomy of the horse in a later segment. If you'd like more information, you can go to thehorse.com, talk to your veterinarian about different anatomical sites that you're interested in on the horse, and of course your public library is 
very good source of information. Thank you for sharing this uh, time with me today and hope to see you in the next segment.